What is the CS lesson going to be on? It's his. It's it's a one-on-one -on -one lesson with a John Katz is his name. I'm going to call him right now. Yo. Yo. Yo, can you Yo, hear me? How you doing, man? Hey, man. You in the Netherlands? Yes, I'm in the Netherlands. My wife is, her family's from the Netherlands. Ooh. Well, good to meet you, man. Congrats on the giveaway. Massive. Thanks. Thanks. Were you pre how, how'd you feel when you won? Were you pretty shook? Uh, yeah, I first didn't believe it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, then it started kicking in, so. So I'm reading yeah. your document here, and it sounds yeah. like your concern is you want to be able to stay more calm and give better info and be more precise. Yes. When you say be more yes. precise, were you talking about like mechanics wise, you should be more precise overall with comms and everything? Uh, basically overall. Interesting. All right. And, and when you play, do you ever play face it or is this mostly just matchmake? Uh, it's mostly match matchmaking and some, sometimes it's a, a portal. Uh, yes. Yeah, portal. Okay. And that's like a face it thing. Uh, yeah, it's like the face it for like the northern part of Europe. Interesting. Is that, is that the 128 tick rate servers and everything like that? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's my main problem with uh, matchmake. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. The first thing I normally tell people who deal with staying calm is like, well, I guess one more question I have then before I say this. Do you, when you play... And you're you're not staying calm. What level? Like, is it to the point where you're getting like anxious, or is it just like you get flustered when you're trying to kill someone, or like where does it? How does it normally manifest when you're not being calm, or what? What are you normally? What situations are you normally in? Yeah, it's normally the flustered part of getting frags of throughout the round of which part of being flustered. Uh, yeah, mostly through frags. Okay. All right. So then it's not exactly what I was going to introduce at first. Cause a lot of times when I tell people who are, um, flustered or anxious or whatever is the first thing you have to do is accept. I was talking about this on stream the other day, the accepting the nerves, accepting being flustered. Some people like get mad at themselves and re like get really frustrated that they are nervous or they are flustered or whatever. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is if it's through mechanics, being flustered through mechanics, a lot of time is just, I think not knowing exactly what to do with kills and just you kind of just don't want to die. I don't there's 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 a, there's a rough psychology around people just getting I don't know caught off guard or whatever the situation is where, where this happens. And I know exactly what you're talking about because I've, I've watched it happen a ton where people get flustered with kills and a couple of different things that I think happen are one um, when you don't know exactly what you're focused on with shooting you just start spraying or you don't know if you should be bursting and you're in your head really about the type of shooting you should have and sometimes before that because you're not confident about the style of shooting you just get flustered in general by the advice by the engagement because you're not confident so i think you have to do two things one you have to kind of like rewire how your brain feels just when you fight in, a, in any like situation whenever you see an enemy and then two you need to build some confidence through like training your mind to react in a way to where your shooting style is kind of chosen more autonomously versus where you're like, oh, should I be spraying, bursting, whatever. I'm not sure if that's ever an issue, but I know sometimes people who get flustered fighting, they get in their head about what shooting style they need to, to be on and they start focusing too much on like, oh, is my crosshair in the right spot? Is all this? And they're thinking about things that you just shouldn't be thinking about when you're playing. So I think the first thing when you talk about being flustered, one thing, one style of training I like to have people do is... You deathmatch and you focus on a style of shooting when you deathmatch, right? And you don't actually worry about getting the kill. So many people are worried about not getting the kill. And so what the key is here is you choose a shooting style, whether it's tapping or bursting or spraying. And no matter the distance, your, your, your rule is you have to shoot that style. So if he runs right in front of you and you say, hey, I'm one tapping right now, you can't just hold mouse one. You have to go click, click click and you're probably gonna f die right most of the times you're probably just gonna not get the kill but the rule is you have to follow the shooting method and what this does 
is it gives you more one trigger control and also it makes you not so reactive to the death or the potential of dying or not getting the kill and it makes you more focused on what you are doing and I know it sounds like what I'm telling you not to focus on once you're in a match, but the idea here is that you're exaggerating the goal. The goal is when you see someone, you're not giving so much into losing your focus on um, being caught off guard or whatever is happening and why you're flustered. You're focusing more on yourself. When you end up playing a match, the end goal is you're not ever focused on shooting style. You're focused on things like radar, communication, the spot you're in. Do you like the angle you're at? Sometimes... Um, you get caught out of position. And the only time that should be ever a thing is if you, A, are lacking information, or B, you're trying to help a teammate. And ideally, lacking information is one of the harder things to control when you're playing, like, matchmake, because you don't always know when you have good teammates. And when you're trying to help a teammate, B, that's a that's a interesting conversation. That's probably a separate thing. Uh, if, you got, if you get caught off guard because you're trying to help teammates, that's a whole psychology thing. Sometimes people... At, on pro team say hey i'm not going to help you unless i like what you're doing kind of thing and i've heard that said literally to people's teammates so um don't always feel bad to not help people if it gets you put into bad situations you said one of your strengths is support right and i think when people are overly supportive i've dealt with this in my career when i switch into a support lurk role is because you're a support player, you prioritize everyone else's comfort over your own. And hey, I'm ready to flash. Hey, I'm ready to do this. And you're just trying to help. And you're scared of like baiting. You're scared of being the reason that you lose the round. So we got to break a little of that where you're not scared to lose the round. Or you're not scared to die. And all these things. Uh, when you're playing to not die or you're playing to not lose, um, you're generally not in the right mindset. You want to play to kill. You want to play to win. And so I think... The reason I kind of went on this rant is to just start to get you in the mindset and plant some seeds about how you should be focusing about playing the game. Even if you're never going to try to compete for a living, even if you're never going to join a team just playing casually, that's even more reason to be confident and to not be flustered in this situation. You don't want to let ladder anxiety. I don't know if that's a thing. Some people are so anxious about getting to the next rank that the outcome of every match is weighing on them so heavily, but you got to remove ladder anxiety. you got to remove the goal and the outcome. Um, you rather just the outcome of getting to the next rank. Deal with that in Valorant, deal with that in CSGO, uh, all those things. So uh, do you think you deal with ladder anxiety at all? Or is it purely the other stuff we were talking about? Uh, well, of course, it does play a little bit of a role, but I don't really care about the ranks anymore. I just want to have fun. There you go. Exactly. All right. So beautiful. So that's one of the main reasons that you should just be focusing on confidence as much as you can and what what rank are you right now matchmaker it doesn't i'm not you know whatever your rank is uh, i know I'm it doesn't DMG. so like i know rank doesn't represent everything obviously i think i'm like mg <laughs> i don't even know what i am because i don't play matchmaker a lot but um one thing i notice at lower ranks in general that'll help you overall is just that confidence thing i talk about in valorant streams all the time um confidence and like aggression dominates so much people at lower ranks. And I'm sure you've witnessed this before. Sometimes when you're just feeling on point and you're just taking fights, you just seem to win more sometimes when you have this natural like confidence around because you're just, these fights you're taking, they, they, they become easier the more aggressive you get. And it's not always the case. You'll get punished by people with good aim and good mechanics. But um, a lot of times when I'm in the zone, I'm playing super aggressive and I find like people at lower ranks, like it doesn't even feel fair because they're just playing in the same spots. Um, every round or whatever and i'm just running at them and, and getting these kills and they, they don't probably feel like they have any answer so i think i have an ip so we can go to server i'm gonna be able to start actually give you some examples here so do i see your singer songwriter yes it's dope dude what kind of style of music uh mostly acoustic pop interesting maybe we'll have a, at the end of the lesson maybe i'll have a listen to something you do oh uh, you don't have to <laughs> uh, it's up to you i wouldn't mind that's not that good. I'm bu a busy bit with an album, though. Okay, cool. So go spectator for a minute. Spectate me. So do you ever go in practice mode, by the way, on your own server? Uh, not really, no. Yeah, it's so funny. So many people don't do this. They only do official game modes. A lot of people only do deathmatch and play games. So I haven't ever struggled as much with the drill, like what you're saying of calmness in fights. But I did do that drill at different points in time when I felt like, like maybe I was jumping right into spraying. I would sometimes see enemies, and if the guy was here, 
right when my crosshair is here, I would just start shooting early and see how there's like not super good, like yeah. that bullet's not super good, that bullet's not super good, versus just seeing, knowing that, like say that's his body, coming, peeking, being on him, and you see like the difference of the, that batching, right? So like, yes. that's one of the things about being calm that you're gonna benefit from, is like when you see an enemy, like not just being like, you know, and having this happen, and being a little bit more um, intentional with where you start your crosshair, that instant kind of subtle pull down, right? When you press mouse one, making sure you're not aiming up here or down here, but you're at the right level. Um, and obviously if you wanna hit them in the head, you aim at their head. If you're very confident in your aim that day, you're shooting for short burst headshots, that's one thing. But that's kind of the reason that we wanna work on um, the drill I gave you, which is when you go deathmatch, start out with just tapping and just run around and tap people. And even if they're right here in front of you, you have to just be very calm and tap. And even if yes. you die, you die, it's fine, but you're, you're working on that drill. So do that for probably like 15, 20 minutes, at least 10 minutes, right? You know, if you're bored. Yes. Five minutes at the, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever you could do is gonna help you. The next thing about winning more fights and staying calm in mechanic fights is to realize what fights are made of. The other aspects of winning fights is mechanics in CSGO and Valorant, whatever game you're playing, first person shooter, well, mainly those two. The main two mechanics for aiming and getting kills are pre-aim and flick shots. So one reason I like to run around in a server like this, you could just launch up server anytime. Um, you could find a config on like on Google for like practice server so that it kicks out all the bots so that you could fly through walls like this so that you have, you know, the, you know, the impact and then you have like tracers on the nades like that, right? So you could practice and see where exactly things are landing. There's even, uh, I forget the bind. What is it? Like show, throw last grenade or whatever. So if you throw a flashbang like this and you're curious who gets blinded by it, you could hit a bind and it'll throw the flashbang from where you threw it. Anyways, that's kind of besides the point for fighting. So the two main things I think for fighting are pre-aim. And the reason I brought up my own practice server, one of the reasons I think being your own server helps is for pre-aims. And the way it helps pre-aims is just spending more time running around the map and visualizing things. And maybe you don't have a problem with this at this point, but like... Sometimes I'll just like, and I don't play like this once I go live, but sometimes I'll like stand close to this wall and be like, all right, see this like texture. You might not be able to see it because resolution is different, but I'll aim like right here and be like, where does that bring my crosshair? Okay. If I don't move it, I just strafe out to the left more. So if I stay, keep it to the right, it's right here. Okay. If I want to pre-aim ramp, I'm right there. Okay. Like let me pre-aim it from different spots. And, pre -aim from, and like when I'm playing, I don't like look at textures and think about pre-aim. Like maybe if I was like a, an opera, if I was had some gnarly like, I had some like super gnarly like mid pick lineup right here. You know, I know some people have this. They used to do it pro. They would like line up some pre aim and then they would duck peek. You know, they would have like a texture they look at and then they know they could just duck peek and kind of pre fire. That's a different story. But running on a map like this, really great for pre aims. Um, if you can practice pre aims with your buddies in a server, or whatever, that's good. The other part of winning fights is flick shots. And then the final part is recoil control. So I don't obviously know. I actually was thinking of going to watch some of your clips on All Star. They have some of your clips. So I was thinking of doing that mid-lesson. And yeah, I can just show you my opinion on what I'm watching and what you're not um, doing what I think you could do better with your aim. But So the first thing you're going to practice after is that drill. I think that's going to make you more calm in fights and you're going to deal with different things. The next thing you're going to have to do is realize like, because eventually when you do that drill, the deathmatch one, you start to... Maybe you're like, okay, it's just deathmatch, but I'm still going to have to go play a match and I'll be more nervous. you got to try to focus on that mat, that energy for the first couple games you play. It's really important because if you just take it for granted that you're in deathmatch, you're like, well, it doesn't really matter if I die anyways. You're perpetuating the same issue, which is you're overvaluing dying in the game. Yes, you want to win rounds. Yes, you want to stay alive, but you want to keep that same energy of it's okay. I'm calm. I'm trying to hit a one shot. And you're going to go back to that feeling of in deathmatch, fighting the urge to spray or do whatever because you just have to do the drill right and so you got to try to hone in on that feeling of fighting whatever you want whatever you want to do and doing things with a little bit more control then you can start focusing on these things the last thing before i lagged out i was talking about flick shots right practicing flicks yes. i'm better at flicking to the left i know that flicking to the right i'm pretty good at i could still be like somewhat accurate within a range this is my range probably from here to here so from here to here, this is my wrist is planted on the desk right now. Without moving my arm, that's my range. Left is a little bigger than right. I just know that. That's just the thing I know about myself. I'm not going to be perfect, but I, I could train it, but that's that's just pretty much how it is, right? When it comes down to this, the first thing is you and your mental side of control. The second thing is 
good pre-aims. Third thing is good flicks. And one thing that ties everything in together is what I was talking about, which is recoil control and like cross replacement. So when you see an enemy, just because they're in front of you and I tell you, hey, this is how you spray, not everything needs to be at their kneecaps, right? The more confident you get with aim, if a guy is this close and this is his head, you can start at his head and, and adjust way faster, right? Because if that happens to headshot him, then you start headshot him, okay, he's dead. Get one more and then that's, you know, boom, 3K. But if you're not hitting people in the first bullet and you're not super confident in your first bullet or your, your aim overall, then that's where you try to cut the, the kind of situation down the middle, you know, and aim at the waistline with more of your fights and then recoil control, right? So those two, those, those two things of preem and recoil control are like the end all be all for winning the fights. But the way to make fights easier on yourself are positioning, are being calm, are preem, right? So preem are like the foundation for just like setting things up. So if I think a guy's here, like it's much better for me to like strafe out like this than it is to go W around the corner diagonally, right? You obviously would agree. And I don't know your skill, I'm just giving you examples. And um, so like things like strafing out and preem are obviously gonna be the factor in making it easier. But then once you shoot, if he moves or misses, that's where the flick motion, and that's where recoil control comes down to uh, who's going to get the kill. So practicing recoil control is something that is kind of ambiguous, like in vague. Um, there's not any one perfect drill. What I tell people is to acknowledge a couple of things. When you're close range, you can 1,000% master recoil control like a pro. Like it's not that hard. If it guys this range, like doing that is all you need. It doesn't need to be perfect batch. And what I just did is not that hard. Yes, it's, it's easier said than done. You have to get used to it. But... Um, a spray close mid range is just a light pull down with some repetition and you'll start to get the feel when someone's in tunnel this far that's not perfect but I'm, I'm going to be able to control that and then what is a spray transfer a spray transfer is knowing recoil control to a flick so that a lot of people think that's way gnarlier than it is but it's not that gnarly it's just knowing that you have to flick and continuing where you were in the spray um Something that's hard for me to teach you is how to feel the spray. I can tell you that initially on a spray for me, I use a hard pad, so it's really it's really slick on my mouse pad. So I don't need to apply a lot of pressure. I pull down a little bit on my first, like after bullet one, two, three, I'm pulling down like here, four, five, I go to the left a little and I kind of am down here now in this area. So it's like down to the left and I'm kind of holding down here. You don't try to guide it a lot though. There's not any like big jagged movements in spray control. It's just pressure on your mouse downward. Um, so I don't know if you have trouble with spray, but if that is a thing, one of the one of the focuses for you is going to be when you see opponents, not just shooting so fast right when you see them, so you don't run into that issue where the guy's here and you see him and you do that number right. You want to make sure if the guy's there right when you peek him, it's boom, I'm right on him with all my bullets right. Easier said than done, of course, but. Um, that's why going on a server like this to me is really good practice because you can see the impacts of the bullets and you don't have the pressure of enemies. So even taking away more from what we're talking about with you not feeling nervous when you see people, it's just another way to practice recoil without stress and pressure, right? So one of the biggest things people have struggle, struggles with is just like positioning and where to play spots. Think of everything um, as a possibility that you could do anything you want so you don't feel restricted. That's the only reason I say that. Some people say, okay, this is a good angle in B. So because Jordan told me this is a good angle, every time I play B, I'm going to play this angle. Like, obviously, this is a fine angle. In some situations, this is a fine angle. This is a fine angle. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. The best way to think about angles is always just to be, like, what people don't expect. And the first layer of what people don't expect is for you to be in the open, right? So anytime you peek something... The lines that people expect you to be on are, turn down my volume a little I shoot, is that line, that line, that line, right? Let me see. The window, the window, that door, right? So anything in between those angles is a solid angle to get someone off guard. And the wider, the, the, the larger the depth is in between each of those angles, the better chance there is um, to kill someone in off angle. So the angle that I ran to right away was right there, naturally, because I know that's the widest depth between two spots that they're going to look at coming out tunnel. And that's just instinct. Over the years, you'll see a lot of pros play this angle when people are coming out tunnel. Because it's the easiest way to, if you have a good preamp, someone's running out, get one kill, reposition, and have a chance of getting two kills, even though they're right next to each other, right? 
So this you can apply this to any map. You just go in your own server, you look around and say, okay, that's an angle, that's an angle. Like you're not, even though this is the in-between, you're not really worried about someone playing that angle. Like they will, like sometimes people will stand like at an off angle right here and get a kill and fall. So you're aware of them, but not every time you go B, it's not like you go like jiggle, 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 you know, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. You don't jiggle every single thing. That's why a lot of times a wide peak is so powerful because like you're taking advantage of the fact that like Maybe you flash this, so you know, like, if someone turns, they're not going to play, like, there. If someone's here and they hear the flash, they might still turn and play here. So, like, you know, okay, when I run in B, I'm just going to run, run, run with my flash, and I'm going to swing here, because they might be there, there, there. So I'm going to do a peek that's only exposed to those two. So, boom, wide peek there. If he's up there, I react. If he's not up there, he's where I pre-aimed, and it's, like, more likely. So the way you play angles on offense is that way but on defense you try to think more about um and it might be it might be second nature to you already but um just to win more fights one of the things that you should be always aware of is trying to play between the slices of pie every angle is a slice right so here's this angle and here's that angle those are the two most common spots right right there and there obviously middle of the open again this is the best way to catch someone off guard when they come around this corner a lot of people far too often are just holding angles like this and they're like, okay, i got to outreact the guy. Well, this is going to give you another 0.2 seconds on the guy by playing off angles, right? So just something to make sure you're aware of. Do you feel like you do off angles pretty well? Uh, I'm mostly camp corners, close, close corners. Exactly. And so that's a problem a lot of people have. So close corners, like this spot is not terrible just because a lot of times like newbies aren't really good at peaking good. Like they'll peak this good and then they'll kind of go like this. That's like a terrible peak, right? Versus like peaking this and then like something committed where they're like committed to the fight versus just like crossers like kind of dragging from this angle to that angle. Like a lot of good players will peak this, that, and then commit. Or they'll be up on this ledge, peak that, peak that, peak that. And it's like just smooth and they're on the spot people are going to be. Because they know people play here, here, or here. Really, no one plays back there and no one plays here. No one's going to play in the middle of the angle here because that's this angle now, right? So anything along yeah. this line, they're not going to play. Anything along this line, they're not going to play unless they uh, play close. Right? No one really sits like here. They do, but they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's if you, and if you peek it, you peek for the close. Right? You always peek for the close and then follow up. So this is head level and then, yeah. Um, same goes for everything else. Right? Start peeking these things. That's the angle people expect. Most CTs won't play over here though because this is way too in the open. So if they miss a shot. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, you get my point. You focus on these things in practice. You focus on shooting style and spray and good pre-aim. When you go live, you can still focus on them. Just realize that as long as you're focused on these things, your results are not going to be to your potential. Because whenever you're thinking about anything but the game, but rotations, but you know the actual information at the game at hand, you're limiting your brain usage. You're limiting your potential because you're focused on other things. It's the same reason Forrest, Nico, all the great aimers of the world will say, if you're thinking about your aim, your aim is not on point, right? So while you're going through this process, the key with all of this mental stuff we're talking about is to remember this and not be hard on yourself. If you start getting hard on yourself or you expect results right away, you're going to be mad because you're thinking so much about stuff. So you have to have time for it to set in and to become second nature. So while you think about all these angles, give yourself a chance to be outreacted. Give yourself a chance to still be caught off guard. It's still okay to get caught off guard. Um, just learn from them and realize, okay, like if you, if you're standing right here and the guy comes out and still out reacts, you'd be like, okay, like I could have tried playing more of an off angle. Like you were acknowledge if you were thinking a lot about where you should be standing and you weren't focused on your crosshair and the guy comes out and kills you. That's okay. Just say, okay, next time in that situation, I'm going to try to do better with my focus. So just a little self love reminder for the, for that kind of these concepts. Then no, we're talking about a lot of angles and positioning, all these things to focus on and not being nervous. Once you start getting comfortable with playing off angles and your shooting gets a little bit more on point and you're not flustered and you're, you're kind of spraying better, the important things of CS are what I said a minute ago. So start realizing that's a whole another kind of lesson in itself. I'll, I'll briefly talk about it though, but rotations, positioning, radar, communication is massive. So communication is meant to guide your teammates, right? And that's the same thing you expect out of them. And you're not going to get it in matchmaking a lot. You're just not. But the thing is, is you could do the best. And what I've noticed is when your comms are better yourself and you're guiding your teammates, they tend to step it up a little. But if your comms and you're playing a spot like this and you come and you kill a guy and they run in front of the bomb site and you just say B, then you're letting your teammates down. 
right? Now, in some cases it's passable, but you're guiding your teammates. So, killed one, I see two, three, four B, right? Two, three B, in sight, crossing the platform, right, the platform. I hit another guy, someone else 50 damage. They have three Mac 10s, one AK, one op, right? Like, if I know no one has an op and they don't smoke door, my rotate looks completely different. If you say, they all have Mac 10s and AKs, I'm flying like this, right? If you say they have an op though, I might take some checkpoints to jiggle. I might even waste a flash early just to make sure I don't die because it's very common for an op to come here. And that's all because my B player simply decided to be a better teammate. So for you, the only thing you can control is you can't control your teammates' comms. You could have good comms yourself and you can encourage them to have good comms by giving good information. And if you're blatantly giving better information than your teammates all game, then they're, they gotta be stupid to not know that they're letting you down, right? So one thing you could work on right away is just guiding your teammates better with comms. You're not gonna be perfect at it right away. You might overcome sometimes, but you need to just learn how to just give more information. And you don't need to tell them everything you're doing. You don't need to be like, all right, leave and be gonna hold mid right now. I got one flash left. Like you could just say, hey, I'm not holding tunnel B tunnels for a second. I'm gonna watch mid, right? Like that's massive. But a lot of people might just leave B tunnels and watch mid without saying anything. And then their teammates assume you have B and then they shoot someone in the side from B or whatever, you know, like that is not news to you. I'm sure you, you know, it's obvious that you should tell someone you're not watching something. But just introducing to you the concept that you need to acknowledge that comms are a little bit more than just saying where you died or who killed you. Got it? Yes, got it. Cool. In terms of getting to a higher rank, I think one of the most underrated skill sets and topics is comms. I think people hear that a lot and they just assume, oh yeah, it's like talking to your team, right? Like, yes, that is the basics. But I don't think people realize how far uh, the idea of good communication goes and what it does for your teammates and how much of an impact it has on the game at hand. Um, one round different, one kill different, one less death equals better economy, equals better round win, one more piece of info equals hey the guys. round win, which equals better economy, which equals snowball effect. Like, so many more games are won and lost than people think by one lack of com com uh, communication. Um, so that's gonna change your results a lot. Comms, and then knowing how to position yourself better and being more confident to just say, Hey, I have a plan. And so at first you're going to play an off angle. You're going to get one and then you're going to be like, oh shit, I'm blind and you're going to die. And then so next time you're going to be like, okay, instead of falling here, I'm going to fall here. So when I get a kill, if the other guy's not close to him, I could jump away really quick. And then if they all come out tunnel, I could throw this cool flash and come back and peek with it. And I know the flash lands right there. Boom. I just made a little scheme and it's all based off this random spot that I'm not really going to play a lot, but I might fall to it sometimes. Like say you get a kill here and they throw like a lurk smoke and you kind of watch the edge of the smoke, they don't come out, smoke fades, you're holding this angle for a second, you kill one more, jump away, and there's more there, oh shit, I didn't die, I didn't die, boom, I got a flash, and now this plays in the back of your mind. But like a lot of times, without lying to me, how many times have you fallen back and you just don't know what flash you wanna throw or don't know what you wanna do, right? Quite a number of times. Exactly, so any position you're at, try to have this mindset more of, playing off angles and immediately when you die, don't just be like, oh, I missed my fucking shot. Yes, maybe you missed your shot on the second guy, but if you kill the first guy and you just go, oh, and your spray's bad, well, maybe, today, okay, like I missed a shot, but really I missed a shot because I was nervous about falling back. So next time just commit to the fallback and have a play. Throw a flash, get the kill, now fall. You know, like you be more creative um, with your reactions once you learn the scenarios that you're gonna be put in with this different play style I'm suggesting, which is, playing in the open a bit more. Um, yeah. So you want to get better info and stay calm. So I think we, we generally covered that. I think, um, you know, I didn't tell you every piece of information you should be going over, but you know, when you rotate, if you knew, you know, anything you could think of that would help your team, you know, if you were a B player and you knew an opera shot a bullet upper B and then five seconds later, they hit catwalk, you know, on dust two. Um, and the one guy was up or be dark with the op. That's not a bad thing to say to your team if they're about to smoke off cat and they say, oh, I see one cat, smoke's coming off cat. You could say, it's max four people because the opera can't be there yet because you know you heard him up or B or something. You know, like little things like that. Opera still be telling, watch the rotate mid, you know? Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So, yep. Jump on scroll or wheel or space bar or both. Okay, and then... I think I want to watch a couple of your clips now on All Star. I think I have a link to your profile, so give me one second. You could tune into the stream if you'd like. Sure thing.
And guys, don't be saying rude comments about his skill level, wh whether he's better than you or worse than you. We're trying to encourage people on the channel, so we don't need you guys tearing anyone down while we watch these clips. Can you go show good tips for Mirage? I am currently giving a private lesson that's public. I'm giving a public lesson. So... Yeah. This is All Star, guys. This is who the giveaway was from. AllStar.gg is a lightweight clipping service. Your FPS is not dropping when you use All Star because they use a cloud-based algorithm to get your clips by using the demo system in Counter-Strike to get your clip after the match. So after you get a kill, you type exclamation mark All Star. It uses the algorithm to start the clip before your first kill and right after your last kill of the previous round. New features are coming out to add music and editing and all sorts of other things to your clips. But just wanted to give a quick shout out to All Star for putting this giveaway together. A John Katz, who is doing the lesson right now with me, won this lesson plus a thousand dollar CSGO knife. So check out All Star. They're going to be doing more giveaways. They're currently giving away a RTX 3080 gaming PC. $3,500 build uh, giveaways on June 7th. So check them out. Super awesome um, program they should be trying. I'm a partner with them. They just got $3.5 million of funding. They have Mark Cuban and a bunch of other great investors on board, people from the CS scene, from ESL, different companies that have worked together to put together something that gamers would love that wouldn't affect their PCs. Um, CSGO have a replay system, of course. Um, so you can see on their website right here, they have Dota 2 and CSGO right now. And coming soon, Fortnite League of Legends, Rainbow Six, Valorant. Valorant's the one I'm most excited about. They're already connected to the Valorant API. Once they have the Valorant replay system enabled on Valorant's end, they will have the ability to clip. So this is what happens. Um, you literally just type Alstar and they put together this whole thing for you automatically. It puts a bumper on the front. So this is the guy we're giving a lesson to. So a little bit of a draggy spray, staying low. So a little 3K. A little uncertainty here. Wait to see who's going. Good pre-aim. Good pre-aim. Standing in the open. We want to make sure we're strafing for the next box peak here. Flash. Okay, that's good. That's the angle. Good kill. Good flash. Push off the opera if he's holding. Gets down lower fast. Decent pre-aim. Could have probably sw swiped to window fast. Good plant. They smoked off his door. He's got good cover. Good reposition. I don't like if he stays where he just made noise. I like that he jumps and then repositions. Good sound usage to reposition. I don't like that noise right there. Completely unnecessary. Um, no reason to make steps there. If that guy's door below him. I don't know if, the, if this guy ramp is the last player, then that's my bad. I thought there was two left. No, there is two left because we just saw the guy wind over here. So yeah, completely unnecessary to make those footies up there. Sound is massive. Make sure you're aware. Not a bad peek right here. What I would probably be doing though, because you have a guy at a different level than you under you right here, is playing contact. So I would play as Heidi as I can with these angles. And hopefully your teammate traded right there. Getting a little lazy at that crosshair right here. It's a mistake a lot of people make is they preempt stuff too soon. Make sure you keep your crosshair right here before you go out there. There's no reason for you to be looking towards balcony or anything until you're like closer to here on the ground. Was this helpful so far to you, though? Uh, definitely. Hope it encourages you to tighten up some of these habits. And I think these drills, like, you're, you're obviously not trying to go pro. You're just having fun. I think some of these things, though, over the course of the next month or two, will really start, you'll start, start to notice some gains on w amount of games won, rank, kills, just overall. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't so working for like the last few oh, days, and I clipped a few, but... Curious if they got my clips. I got this little clip yesterday, little ace. Just just toot my own horn really quick. So, he's already peeking on cat. Cat one. I'm sure I'm behind you. Two lower, two lower, two lower. One more lower. This is just an eco round, so I was being kind of bullish here. But because I know they have no armor, I was just kind of playing. So it's hard for me to make any like fundamental... Oh, this is a pretty sweet 5 carry here. Let's see. I think I, I just remember one of the Three kills. Elevator. Two elevator, one. Cut. Nice. 
in the same game. So this one is partly pre-aims. So you can see though, as I'm coming around the corner, like once they called, they gave me information. I knew everyone was top A. So once they called to elevator, my main concern is the elevator guy is probably not watching cat right away. So my first angle I have to clear, see elevator's not exposed to me yet. So see how my crosshair came around the corner looking towards this stuff. So that's just pre-aims in general. I know there's a guy here already because they're calling elevator. So my first object is to make sure I don't die to something before elevator, which someone at this little angle over the single box might be able to be peeking me without them seeing me because there's like smokes and stuff down. So I quickly peek this, get that kill, pre-aim that. And then I, I heard a flash come from spawn earlier. So I know that this guy, you see, he was just throwing his flash off the wall right there. And immediately there's a rotator. The mid player is obviously coming to help Cat. I know the mid player from right here. I already know the mid player is going to be rotating under me. So because they call, because these guys are calling long A. So this is just them, like me playing off their info a little bit, and then me playing off game sense, which is like, obviously the mid B player has got to do one of two things. He's got to rotate under me or rotate Cat. So right away I throw this flash because I know, and watch, like I run far and I look towards B. See how I look towards B tour right away? Because if this guy isn't spawn, he's going to be a B player rotating out of B. And he doesn't have any other options. If he's outside B, he's going to be outside B still. If he pushed up or he pushed up or he's not concerned. So I'm looking towards B right away. Kill this guy. And then I immediately assume he's cat. So see how I run back? I say he's probably cat. So I molly it. And then I was like, actually, you know, maybe he's still like mid. If he went, if this guy did push up or B, he might be coming out mid door late because they just call it kill and spawn. So I'm holding mid door right now because he might have pushed up B. Then boom, I just got confirmation that he is in fact cat. I remember this guy's the lowest rank on the team. So I kind of just run straight at him. Baby pre-aims, baby pre-aims, baby pre-aims. When I say baby pre-aims, I just mean like I'm just taking little tiny angles away from him constantly. Um, I think I just got a clip though from the founder. Or I, should, I don't know if I call him one of the founders of All Star to show you what All Star's got coming, which is they have their studio. So this is a clip my friend that, that uh, that's All Star founder made. His name's Ants. He used to be a pro CS player back in the day. Some of you might know who he is. I'm actually gonna follow you. I don't know why I don't follow you, Nick. Um, so apparently they're adding features to all-star so what's going to be coming on all-star is right now you could just type exclamation mark all-star in game and a clip is automatically generated for you via their cloud now once that clip is made you can see it in your profile you can see it in their discord server and it's all gucci but what they're adding is abilities for you to add music and other effects and more to come over time and currently this is apparently some of the stuff that's about to come so it looks like an alternate intro music So it's synced up. Oh, and there's it's like cut between the frags. And that's cool. And this is all done automatically. That's really neat. So it, you guys might have missed why that's cool, but aside from the adding the music, so you'll have the ability to add music, a different intro, and it cut between the kills. So as of now, it does not cut between the kills. It's just an algorithm, so it doesn't affect your FPS through the cloud. It goes in. And it takes the clip a couple seconds before your first kill and a couple seconds after your last. So this is a really cool development and it's only gonna keep getting better from what I hear, but they're just gonna roll things out in different waves and stages, right? Um, so yeah, you guys could do all-star slash soon, sign up, potentially test all-star. It's really cool, awesome program by them. So I'm excited for you guys to try it out. I just always was so annoyed with clipping programs in the past that affected my profile or FPS and added just more programs to my background that I felt were just affecting my gameplay and then did it in a way that was kind of clunky. This way is super clean, um, especially for highlights to be able to just come in your profile and grab a quick link or download the clip in high quality. And also it's a nice reference, just like if you ever want to make a frag movie, you just have all your clips. If you don't like something and you're like, oh, that's not a super sick clip, you could just go um, on your page and hide it from your profile. All right, dude, I think that's it um, for the lesson. Any other questions you want to fire off while we're just chilling? I'm not in a rush. Uh, no further questions. <laughs> you don't need to be so formal with me. I need to learn a Dutch word before I go. How do you say just thank you and have a good day? Uh, thank you all and have a fine avond. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you all. And there was the next part. And nog een fijne avond. Fuck that, dude. How do I.
<laughs> Dank je wel. Ik ben een kind even vliegtuig een paar keer. En nog een fijne avond. I just can't even. Uh, nog een fijne avond. Like I can't even reach that part. Okay, that's, that's already really close. One more, one more. Oh. En nog een fijne avond. En nog een fijne avond. I'm like. Huh. En nog een fijne avond. Dank je wel. En nog een fijne avond. Alright man, we'll have a good day, dude. Appreciate you. You too, man. See ya. Nice to meet you. Yeah.